So today I want to look at a problem of an incident light ray that's going to hit a glass slab that has a certain thickness. Uh, once it hits the slab, it undergoes some refraction. So there's a refracted light over here that goes through the slab and eventually it hits the opposite surface. And again, there's more refraction that happens at the other surface and you get an emerging light ray. Now, if you compare the direction of the emergent light ray, it's actually parallel to the incident ray if it was going to continue in a straight line, but it doesn't because of the refraction. But in this problem here, I'm interested in calculating what is this lateral deflection here that happens as a result of the, refracting, the refraction uh, through the glass slab. So let's see how we can set up a problem and solve what this lateral deflection is. All right, I've cleaned up the diagram a little bit. So we have air on the outside and then we have a glass slab. I'm gonna set the index of refraction of the glass slab to 1.52. I'm also gonna consider an incident angle here of 30 degrees. The thickness of the glass slab is three centimeters. I've labeled the refracted angle here as theta r. There's also an outgoing angle here, what I'm gonna, which I'm gonna call theta two. And at the end of the day, this is what I want to find. I really want to look at what is this lateral deflection. So that is the distance between, well, if the light ray didn't go through any refraction, it would continue along this dashed gray line, but it does. So then it, the emerging ray is in the red line here. And what's the distance between those parallel lines? So let's see how we can actually solve that. So the first thing to consider is, let's see what's going on here at the top interface of the glass. So here we're going to have some refraction. I'm going from a low index. The index of air is approximately one. Let's just set it equal to one. I know what my incident angle is, it's 30 degrees. So I can apply Snell's law at this top surface over here. Snell's law for the top, top surface simply looks like this. N1 sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to N of the glass, Ng multiplied by sine of what I've called theta r here. Again, that's the angle with respect to the normal. So I can go ahead and actually solve for what theta r is here. So let's go ahead and do that, theta r. Let's not worry about writing what n1 is. That's the index of medium one, which is air in this case. <clears throat> so we simply have sine of 30 degrees divided by 1.52. All right, so theta r sine to the minus one and of everything here. Sine of 30 degrees is one half, 0 0.5, divided by 1.52. Plug that in your calculator. At the end of the day, what you get for a refracted angle should be approximately 19.2 degrees. All right, now if we consider the refraction down over here at the lower edge of the glass slab. Now if theta r is my refracted angle of 19.2 degrees, that's the angle with respect to the normal, you can immediately see that it's also equal to this angle here. And I need this angle here for the next refraction that's going to happen. So this angle right here is also theta r. And you know the index here is the index of glass. So actually, you're going from glass to air. So it's kind of exactly the opposite of the first case we just looked at. So again, if you apply Snell's law for the second interface down here, you're basically going to get the same equation because we're starting over here in glass. So you get NG sine of the same angle, that refracted angle of 19.2 degrees, and that's a constant. So that has to be equal to the index of air, which is N1. And at the end, we're going to get sine of theta 2. Now, clearly, sine of theta 2 has to be equal to the same thing as my incident angle over here. So the angle theta 2 must be equal to 30 degrees. So that's kind of an easy one to do at this point. All right, we're almost in a position now to start looking at the lateral deflection. Let's clean up the diagram. All right, so to start actually looking at and solving for some of the points, let me label some of these points. I'm gonna call the point up here P. I'm gonna call the one directly below that Q. I'm gonna call this one here, one in the middle here, I'm gonna call that R. And this one here, I'm gonna call it S. We're gonna define some triangles and it's gonna be easier if I define some of these points. 
So what I first want to do is I really first want to find the distance between R and S. Okay. So what is the distance here between points R and point S? How long is that segment? Well, it's not that straightforward actually to just <laughs> immediately just write down an expression. However, if I consider the triangle PQR, I can easily find what this distance over here is QR. Because you know that the thickness of the glass is three centimeters. Therefore, if you simply use the tangent with the refracted angle, so let's look at this. So the tangent for the refracted angle of 19.2, again, has to be this length here, that's the opposite, divided by the thickness. So we have the segment QR divided by the thickness of the glass slab. So therefore, the segment QR is simply the thickness, our three centimeters, multiplied by tangent of theta r. All right, now let's look at another segment. Let's look at the segment QS. How can I calculate QS? Again, I can look at the triangle from P, Q, and S. If you look at that triangle, again, you know this angle here. This angle on the inside has to be this 30 degrees. That's the angle between that gray line and the normal here. This here has to be our same 30 degrees. So we know the angle. So actually the expression for QS, it almost looks exactly like that of QR, right? Because we're looking at the same style of triangle over here, except in this case here, QS is simply gonna be T multiplied by the tangent, not of theta R this time, but of the initial angle of incidence, which is theta I, our 30 degrees. Now this allows us to find what the distance RS was, because that's really what we wanted at the beginning. Because we want to kind of work our way down here to eventually be able to solve for this lateral deflection. However, the length of the segment RS, let's write that. Oops. Sorry, RS. All right, the length of that segment, you can see is going to be the length of the segment QS minus the length of the segment QR. QS minus QR. And we simply have simple expressions for those now. So RS, we can write as uh, QS is T. Both of them have the three centimeters, the thickness of the slab. Let me factor that out. And that's tangent of the initial angle minus tangent of our refracted angle. You could substitute all the numbers here. We're going to get that our segment RS, you should get three tangent of 30 degrees minus tangent of our 19.2. All right, so this length uh, should give you approximately 0 0.68 centimeters, if I did things correctly. All right, the next part now is, so that's this segment right here. Let me put that in the diagram here. So that's what we just calculated here. This is 0 0.68 centimeters. So the next thing you can do now is we really wanna find this distance D. Let me bring it a little bit closer. Maybe change the color here. If I make a line here that runs perpendicular to this emergent light ray, and goes all the way to point S. Now you should be able to convince yourself, again, if you look a little bit at the angles, if this angle down here is 30 degrees, uh, that means that this one inside has to be 60 degrees. And this here is a right angle triangle, which makes that this angle over here also has to be 30 degrees. Now it's very simple because all you want to know is you want to know the opposite side. The opposite side is really what the D value is. That's our lateral deflection. And we know what the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is RS. So right away we should be able to write an expression. Looks like this, cos 
of 30 degrees has to be equal to D divided by our segment length for RS, which we just found, uh, 0 0.68. All right, so at the end of the day, we get D is equal to RS multiplied by a cos of 30. We get 0 0.68 multiplied by root 3 over 2 is cos of 30. Um, and our final answer uh, for that deflection ends up being approximately 0 0.6 centimeters. So the D value, 0 0.6 centimeters, using a little bit of trigonometry and just paying attention to uh, how we label all the angles. <laughs> and there you go, folks. There's the problem for calculating the lateral deflection uh, of a light ray incident on a glass slab.